Oh, yeah. I think he's right on. I agree with him. And he's been at this. Don's, Don's great. His we're, writing's we're like great. We're like contemporaries in the movement. You know, we, our cases started around the same time, back in the late 80s, I think. So. Yeah, it's great to have you guys. You have so much experience in this. And for people like me, who've been going through it just for the last five years and really only part of this movement for the last year or so, um, having your wisdom around us, your calmness is key in, in us moving forward. Yeah, I'm no genius, but I've you know I've just I've seen what works and what doesn't work, and most yeah. everything most everything doesn't work. So <laughs> we're working on it. So yeah, so this is you know distillation of nearly three decades of knowledge. Uh, wow. I could be I could be wrong. I'm no genius, like I said. I'm no legal expert. I just but I was a paralegal. I studied the law a bit. Worked in the legal profession for about ten years as a uh, paralegal. But, uh, that really helps. There's a, there's a few people who have paralegal experience. Yeah. Didn't do me a lot of good. Enough. Didn't do me a lot of good, but, you know, you can't help from learning. You hang around that long, you got to learn something, right? Exactly. Yeah. We're all learning as we go. Yeah. Most of us. So, uh, this again is by Don Rufty in Charlotte, North Carolina called Enforce the Law. That's the new mantra he and I agree on, should be. Enforce the law. Nothing wrong with the, and I used to not believe this. I used to argue with this other guy who would tell me there's nothing wrong with the law, it just ain't being followed. I used to, I used to think we had to have new laws, man. We gotta have some different laws. No. Look at the Bill of Rights. Those are all the, viol the laws that are being violated. Amendments, one, uh, Four, five, six, seven, eight, even, you know, for unlawful imprisonment and, and cruel and unusual punishment, and especially amendments nine and ten for the, you know, whatever Congress is not allowed to do, that's for the states to do. Amendments nine and ten, the people and the states, nine and ten, respectively. And then the 14th Amendment. So people thinking that passing another amendment like a parental rights amendment i mean if you can get that great but i think it's a waste of time because if i mean the bill of rights is the first 10 amendments if we pass another amendment what makes people think they're gonna if, if they ignore the bill of rights why would they pay attention to another amendment by dealing with our rights i i don't get that but anyway uh, i think we got to pass one relating to cameras in court because that's just updating the the uh Sixth Amendment provision for a public trial. If our founding fathers knew that uh, we'd have all this technology 200, 240 years later, then they probably would have put that in the Constitution, right? If they knew you could have cameras that broadcast out to, you know, make the hearing more public, I bet you Thomas Jefferson, Franklin, and all those guys. But it said, hey, yeah, we want that because we want to know what's going on in that courtroom. Isn't that a no-brainer? I mean, what? Uh, anyway, Don Ruftes wrote this, enforce the law. Prosecute crooked judges. We the people need to push for that. If we do, that will happen. As long as we keep complaining about how nasty the CPS workers are and spend all our energy begging for the system to be tweaked, just fix the system. The American people will continue to be victimized by the crooked justice, crooked judges. Cloud, uh, sun's hiding here. It cools off real quick. Uh, the corruption that has been inflicted upon millions of American families arises from illicit court orders being issued in secret kangaroo family courts. Those court orders violate the rights of American citizens. Each such violation is a felony committed by the crooked judge under color of law. That is spelled out in U.S. Code Title 18, Section 242. The crooked judges are not being indicted and prosecuted for their crimes against the American people. 
That is the problem. <laughs> when, when the law is enforced, the crooked judges will be indicted and prosecuted for their crimes. That is when the family court racket will come tumbling down, not before. Enforce the law, capital letters. That should become a mantra for the family rights movement. Enforce the law will look good on signs. It would make a good cheer. Don was a cheerleader at North Carolina State for four years. Barking up the wrong tree. The judge is the only one who can violate your rights. That is the case with all of the citizens whose rights have been violated. In everybody's case, neither the citizen's attorney nor the other attorney can violate the citizen's rights. The citizen's spouse cannot violate the citizen's rights. Guardians ad litem cannot violate the citizen's rights. Let me repeat that. In all of these cases, it is the judge who violates the citizen's rights. Perhaps the third time will be the charm. In all of these cases, it is the judge who violates the citizen's rights. The reason I am so redundant in that, few people in this movement, few people in this civil rights movement seem to understand that. Even when that reality is pointed out to them and they understand that reality, the next day they start barking up the wrong tree again. They say, let's all sue the opposing attorney or the guardian ad litem or the judge or file a complaint with the Judiciary Committee or write to our city council person or our state legislators or our senators or let us file a motion for this or that. All of that beside the point, nibbling around the edges rigmarole for the past decades has accomplished, has accomplished essentially nothing. You there, Ted? Oh yeah, I'm still here. I'm listening. I heard, I heard a ding. I don't know if it's my video or what. Hang on. Oh, somebody. I opened oh. Facebook so I could share this a little bit more, and right. uh, every time somebody sends me a message, you hear that. Got it. So I'm okay. going to get to that as soon as possible. All right, no problem. Now I know what it is. Uh, cool. Thought it might have been my, my camera turning off. No, we're good. All right. We're 100%. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. So, all of those lawsuits aside, nibbling around the edges rigmarole for the past decades has accomplished essentially nothing. The reason is that all of that enormous waste of time, money, and energy misses the point. If you shoot at the wrong target, you never score. Again, in all these cases, it is the judge who violates the citizen's rights. Every time in all these cases, when the judge violates the citizen's rights, that judge commits a felony. Committing that felony is a crime. That crime should be dealt with as any other crime. It should be pursued criminally, not civilly. If a hold-up guy or gal robs a convenience store, the proper response for the store owner is to call the police. It is not incumbent upon the store owner, instead of calling the police, to go out the next day and hire a lawyer to sue the robber or to file a grievance with the robber's union, or even to file an action in small claims court. To do that would be missing the point. Barking up the wrong tree generally, generally results in failure. People in this movement have had decades of that experience. Don Rufty, North Carolina. Crooks will be crooks. They are very steadfast and consistent in their criminality. Expecting them to suddenly do the right thing because you are you or your details might be slightly different from the thousands of other citizens they ruled against 
is not a reasonable expectation, but it costs a tremendous amount of time, money, and effort to find out they will rule against you like everybody else. We all learned that lesson the hard way. I know I did. Went through three attorneys, and I decided to go to paralegal school. That didn't help a whole lot, but at least I wasn't throwing money at attorneys, throwing gasoline on the fire. No one gets justice until the crooked judges go to prison. Then everybody wins together. Military personnel are required to follow only lawful orders. It is one's duty to refuse to obey illegal, unlawful orders. The same should apply to any public servant who takes a similar oath to defend the Constitution. The problem is bailiffs, sheriffs, and their deputies, police just following orders, are also violating citizens' rights. They are sycophantic yes-men and yes-women without whom judges cannot get away with their treason. They don't take their oath seriously. They just want to keep their job, man, you know, like most people. Got to pay that mortgage. Got to put the kids through college. Got to hold on to my job. Got to just follow the orders. But yes, of course, these judge imposters are the mafia dons of the court system. We do well once we get Nuremberg II, III, IV, etc. going to also prosecute their lieutenants, the lieutenants of those black-robed thugs, to send clear signals to the law enforcers that their duty is to the Constitution first. Now he refers to U.S. Code Title 18, Section 242. This nation needs a countrywide, a countrywide movement by the American people to indict, prosecute, and incarcerate the crooked judges in the so-called family courts and their accomplices for their crimes against the American people. U.S. Code Title 18, Section 242 deprivation of rights under color of law. Section 242 of Title 18 makes it a crime for a person acting under color of law to willfully deprive a person of a right or privilege protected by the Constitution or laws of the United States. For the purpose of Section 242, acts under color of law include acts not only done by federal, state, or local officials within their lawful authority, but also acts done beyond the, beyond the bounds of that official's lawful authority. If the acts are done while the official is purporting to or pretending to act in the performance of his or her official duties. <clears throat> 